Hello, welcome back to another video tutorial here at Geek at Play Studios. My name is Gary Miller. One of the members over in the forums, Reiner Jordan over in Germany, sent me a hexagon file of a coil and asked if I knew how to UV map the thing, essentially un unwrap the object so that he could apply a rope texture to it. So let's just go through this little exercise. Uh, this is not the sort of UV mapping that I have done in the past. And uh, it's a little bit of a challenge if you're not familiar with pins and seams uh, as they apply to the UV mapping process. So I'm going to come over here to lines and I'm going to create a helix. Oh, about like that. And I'll add a couple slices to it. There we are. Come over here to surface modeling, add some thickness to that. Okay, for the sake of making this tutorial easier, I'm only going to set my number of points here to 8. I'll go ahead and validate that. I don't need dynamic geometry. Okay, I'm going to call this coil. And I'll create a duplicate of this object here. Okay, let's come over and apply our texture checker material to it. If you look at this, if you wanted to try to apply a rope texture to this, or pretty much any texture for that matter, you're going to run into a lot of problems because this texture checker pattern resembles a JPEG, a bitmap, that you would apply you know, if you created one in Photoshop or any other program. And so these are the results that you could expect to get if you left it at this default setting. Well, let's come over here to UV and Paint. I'm going to come to a split screen. I'm going to hide the texture here so we can see the arrangement, the layout of the UVs. Uh, using the traditional UV tools that Hexagon provides, if we set a spherical projection, well, this doesn't look very good, so let's try a cylindrical. And we could play around with the X, Y, and Z projection settings, and none of this is really going to offer us uh, any hope, simply because it's not uh, um, to scale. So let's try cubic, and well, that just looks like a headache. Planar. And that's just plain our stupid looking. And we're not going to get the results that we want using these traditional tools. So I'm not even going to use those. Over here in my split screen, I have a UV view. If your whatever yours is, you know, say it's a um, uh, perspective, just click on the word up here and set it to UV view. What I need to do is I need to unwrap this object. Let me go ahead right now. I'm going to delete this one. because Let me delete this one. And I'll come back to this. What I need to do is I need to unwrap this. Split it right down the middle and unwrap it. Um, in considering how this is going to look once I apply a texture to it, typically when you apply a texture to an object where the object meets from one end of the texture to the other, there's, there's typically going to be a seam there. So to make my life easy, rather than have the texture say start here, wrap around the object, 
and come back and meet on this end, just like a cigar band, you know, the seam would normally be up here. Well, I'm going to unwrap this so that the seam is down here and it won't be visible. So here's where the beginning and the end of the texture will be. And then it'll come and wrap around the outside and meet again down on the bottom. So you don't, it, it's, it's actually less work, so you don't have to make a seamless texture to go on this. So that's what I want to strive to do. And it's actually pretty simple once you understand uh, what Hexagon is doing. So let's start off. Let me zoom in here. And unfortunately, because I'm working with such a small screen, 1024, 768, I don't have a lot of real estate here. So to begin with, I'm going to use my unfold tool because I want to unfold this. So I'm going to click on that. Now what I have to do is choose where on this object I want to set my seams and my pins. If you're not familiar with seams and pins, by the time we're finished with this, you may not understand it fully, but you'll get a good idea on what's going on here and how they work. A seam is essentially, well, just like the seams on your clothing, where two pieces of material are joined together. Right at that joint, that is a seam. So if you look at this object here, all these lines, let me loop this, this is a seam that comes all the way across uh, and follows the entire contour of my object. This is a seam also, and that's a seam as well. All of these are seams. What I need to do is I need to tell Hexagon where I want the seam to be so that we can separate it at that point. I want to choose the seam where we separate it. So come back and click on Unfold. I'm going to use my Select Edges tool. And I'm going to click down there. Now I want to loop that because I want this selection of edges to, to go the entire length of my object here, all the way down to the bottom there. Well, now that I've selected it, I need to tell Hexagon this is where I want to disconnect my object here. This is, the, this is where I want the seam to be. So I'm going to come right over here to this plus button, and I'm going to hit plus. I'm going to click on it. Now it has added that as my selection for a seam. In fact, when I come back over here in this window, you can see this dark blue line is where Hexagon is now recognizing my seam to be. Well, there's one other thing we need to do. We need to create a selection of pins. And I guess this whole process is like working with material. If you, uh, I don't know, do any sewing or your wife or mother has done sewing, you know they lay fabric out and then they pin it down and then, uh, you know, join other materials to it. Well, we have created our seam here. Now we need to tell Hexagon where we, where we want to pin this down on in, over here in our UV view. So to create pins, we come over here and select points. And depending upon whether you're using edges or points, you want to choose either seams or pins. Well, we're using points, so I want to use pins to tell Hexagon where my pins are going to be. And all you got to do is click on the pins that you want. And since this is a, uh, a closed loop here, I'm going to make life easy on myself. I'm just going to select that edge right there, loop it, come up here to selection, and then convert that se selection of edges to points. Now since the, these points are selected, I'm going to add that. I'm going to click in here and hit the plus button. And now it has unwrapped this object based on the settings of the seams that I had told Hexagon. So let me validate that. Let me close that out. Let me move this over. 
if you look at it, it looks okay. We definitely have unwrapped it. Let me select the edges here and let me loop that. And I'll loop that one as well. And you see on our object where the seam is that we have created. Okay, well, that's fine. The problem here, and this is kind of an idiosyncrasy with hexagon, this loop right here, this round selection of edges here, is this selection here over in the perspective view. And for whatever reason, hexagons having a hard time trying to unwrap this thing. And that's because it's not letting go of this particular point right here. All of these points are still joined. So we need to disconnect them. Let me select that, loop it. You'll you'll get you'll see here what I'm what I'm talking about. This selection of edges is the same as this one over here. We need to cut this right here. Not the model, but the UV. So I'm going to select these points right here and then hit disassociate. Now let's move in a little bit closer. I'm going to select that edge. And now you'll be able to see I've broken that part that area apart. I had to manually go in and separate that little um that little joint right there. Now we can continue on with the unwrapping. So let me bring my tools back in view. I'm going to come up here to select edges. I'm going to select that original seam that we originally started off with. I'm going to loop that. Oops, actually let me, I have to click on unfold again. Select those edges, hit loop. Now watch what happens when I hit, uh, click the plus button. Now, let me validate, hide that. Um, I'm going to come to a single display here. I don't need my perspective view anymore. Now you see this coil is completely unfolded. And Hexagon has done a darn good job. Uh, it's a little stretched and curved over here, but we'll fix that in just a few minutes. And now we've got a nice, flat, straight, almost symmetrical surface with which we can apply a texture map to. But because it's a little curved and distorted, we need to do a little work on it. So I'm just going to select this top edge, hit L to loop that. What I need to do is I need to straighten it out. See, it's got a it's got a little bend to it. I need to straighten this whole thing out and make it perfectly symmetrical. And the easiest way to do that is to loop that whole edge and then come up here to the this little square up here on the vertical scaling uh, widget and I'm going to bring it down right to the yellow center here. If I, if, you know, if I drag it beyond, whether above or below it, it accentuates the, the, the curve here. But if I bring it right to the middle, it makes it perfectly straight. So I'm going to do that to the next one. Make that perfectly straight. Click on the next one. L to loop that, straighten it out, L to loop the next one, straighten that out. And uh, when Mr. Jordan sent me this file, I was trying to figure out what's going on here, why I couldn't get this to work, and then I realized it was because of that little, that joint, uh, hexagon was not letting it go, and I had to manually go in and uh, disassociate or disconnect that manually. Okay, let's come over to the edge. I'm just going to loop. No, I can't do that. Loop that, and the same thing applies over here. I'm going to bring the 
uh, X slider all the way to the middle. There we are. And it straightens all that out. So I am going to pause the video here and I'm just going to straighten all these out manually and I'll be right back. Okay, I've straightened all the horizontal ones out and about two-thirds of the vertical ones out. The rest of them look pretty good. And I think for the sake of consistency, I'm going to select those because they look a little bit closer to one another. I'm just going to stretch them out a little bit. And again, all I'm doing is just selecting them and hitting L to loop that selection. Okay, that looks pretty good. All right, let's come over here and apply a the texture checker to this. Actually, I think I need to come back to a split screen. All right, there we are. Now, you'll, if you look at the texture on our coil as bef instead of what we saw before, now you see it's laid out nicely. Of course, the texture is awfully uh, small, or actually it's very large, and the little polygons here occupy a, a, a very minuscule amount of space on this. So you would definitely need to scale down this texture in order to see better results. But you can do something like that in Photoshop, whatever. So this is really a good, a good way to texture map something by using the pins and seams. In fact, it's about the only way to properly texture map something. Um, when you go through the UV process. So that's it for this video tutorial. I hope it has been uh, of great use to you. And thanks for watching here at Geek at Play Studios. My name is Gary Miller. Have a good day.